Welcome back everyone to the developer tutorials with LiveGDX. In this video we're going to cover our sprite and sprite batch. Now let's get started. A sprite batch is an object that is used to render texture objects to the screen viewport. It can render texture and texture region alongside sprites. So let's first load our texture into memory. First you want to do is public texture. We'll call this sand texture. And then inside the create method, we want to create the constructor for it. So we'll do sand texture equals new sand texture. And texture, the texture object has a couple or quite a few different constructors. Uh, the one that we're going to use is the internal path, but there are other few such as the file handler. So this one is for if whether if your texture is not found within the assets folder, but since ours is, we're going to use the internal default constructor. LoopGDX does have a class called files. So to access that, we do gdx.files.internal and then put in a string. Where it says path, this has to point exactly to the texture, unless your texture will not load into memory. So now it's time to create our sprite batch. So same as the texture object, we're going to do public sprite batch. We call this sprite batch. And then right above the sand texture, we'll do sprite batch equals new sprite batch. And we'll take a look at the sprite batch constructors. So we're going to use the default one with the buffer size of a thousand. Sprite Batch does offer a quite a few other constructors, such as one with an int. Uh, this right here is the buffer size that you can set. Uh, the second one is the buffer size again, as well as the shader program. If you want a custom shader for it, uh, we'll cover that in the later video though. So back to the tutorial game class, we're going to do gdx.gl.clear, gl clear. We'll do gl20 dot color buffer bit to clear the color buffer uh, back to the sprite batch we'll do sprite batch dot begin and then sprite batch dot end so in between these two methods the begin and the end this is where you want to have your draw calls to be at make sure that your draw calls is in between these two methods because if not your application will crash so in order for us to render our texture we're going to go in between the begin and end methods, we're going to do sprite batch dot draw. If we middle mouse button click on the draw method, you can see there's actually quite a few methods with uh, different parameters that you can set towards the texture. Uh, the one that we're going to be using is going to be this one here. So if we did, uh, click on this one, uh, it will bring us to the documentation of this method. So we uh, the method will take in the texture and the x and y coordinates. So for us, since we're going to be using the texture coordinate mapping system, since we don't have a camera uh, set up yet, uh, we're going to position our texture at zero, zero. So inside the method, we're going to do sand texture and put pass in zero, zero. So if we run the method or run the program, we have our texture Another important note to keep in mind is dispose of your resource. So since when we're done rendering our sand texture, we want to go to the dispose method. We do sand texture dot dispose. Same thing with the sprite batch dot dispose. So that way when we're done with the application, we don't have any memory leaks. In order for us to change the width and the height of the texture, we're going to go back to the draw method. Uh, there's two extra parameters that we can pass in. Uh, first being the width of the texture, as well as the height of the texture. So this right here rescales the texture to be the appropriate size that you pass. As you can see, it resizes the texture to be a little bit more bigger. But there is one problem, as you can see here. If we look back, this texture right here is a perfect square. But if we resize the window again, notice how it kind of stretches on the uh, border of the texture. So in order for us to fix this problem, we're going to go back to the uh, tutorial game class. We hit resize and go to sprite batch dot get projection matrix dot set ortho 2D. We're going to pass in 0, 0 and then we're going to pass in the screen width and then the, the screen height. So whenever we resize the window, this method will be called. 
on which it gets the projection matrix of the texture within the sprite batch and then sets it to the appropriate size of the screen width so therefore our texture will be perfectly non-stretch as we resize the window as you can see here. Now let's use a sprite to draw our texture. So back at the top of the tutorial game class, we're going to do public sprite. We'll call this texture sprite. And then we're going to go to the create method right underneath the sand texture. We'll do texture sprite equals new sprite. And in the constructor of the sprite, we have the middle mouse button to click on it. As you can see, we have the default one and the one that we want is the one that passes in the texture. There is a secondary one as well as a few others. We're going to do texture sprite dot set bounds zero zero and then we're going to do 200 by 200. So that way we can resize our texture to be the same as the one shown here. And then again in between the begin and the end methods we're going to do sprite te excuse me, texture sprite dot set uh, dot trawl that we're passing the sprite batch and this right here should render our sprite using the, the texture as a parameter passing to the sprite all right now it's time to render it as you can see we have the exact same image as before to order to prove that it's working i'm going to delete this line of code run it again and there it is same as before all right, everyone, that wraps up everything for this video. I hope you find this video helpful. In the next tutorial series, we'll cover camera projections, such as perspective projections and orthographic projections.